Hello, today we're looking at half equations at electrodes. Now we have done quite a, a lot of electrolysis so far, so you may need to, uh, if you haven't already, go and check out those videos. But as a quick summary, we're going to remind ourselves that we have an anode when we're doing electrolysis, and that's the positive electrode. And that will attract any negative ions, or it will attract negative ions in the electrolyte or in that solution in blue. The cathode is the negative electrode, and that will attract positive ions. That's ions with a positive charge. We could tell the positive side and the negative side by looking at our cell. The long side is the positive end. This we have looked at in a previous video, but we do need to unfortunately, unfortunately memorize it. We need to remember that the anode, when we're doing electrolysis on a solution, oxygen is produced unless there's a halide ion present. Halide ions are fluoride, chloride, bromide, and iodide. And if those are present, we're going to get fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. At the cathode, we've got hydrogen produced if the metal is more reactive than hydrogen. That's what we have to remember as well. Now, we can apply that information to these questions here. So we've got some information at the top there that's going to help us. If you haven't remembered those two sentences on the previous slide, it might be worth going back to have a look. We also need to talk about oxidation and reduction for these different reactions so you might want to remember or remind yourself of this idea of oil rig when we're talking about electrons oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons so we're going to apply that to the different examples here you might want to pause and give some of these a go before we go through them the first one is copper bromide solution so we have positive ions copper and hydrogen and we have negative ions bromide and hydroxide ions now these will help us decide what happens at the anode. So remember at the anode, we're gonna get oxygen unless there's a halide present. And yes, we have a halide. So in this case, we're gonna get bromide ions, which are attracted to the anode because they are negative. That will give us bromine gas, which is Br2. That's the formula for bromine gas. And we're gonna have electrons as well. Now, as you can see there, we've got Br2 and only one bromide ion. So we need to make two or have two bromide ions and that will those will release two electrons to make our bromine gas. There is another way of doing this. This is slightly more common sense. This is the method I prefer, and both methods will get you marks in the exam. You can choose your method, but we're saying bromide ions minus an electron will give us Br2, but remember we've got to balance it, so it's two bromide ions and two electrons that are lost. Okay, so we're going to look next at what happens at the cathode. Now remember the cathode, the rule is we get hydrogen if the metal in the solution is more reactive than hydrogen. So in this case, we've been told copper and silver are less reactive. So we're going to get copper being produced. And that is basically copper ions plus two electrons because copper is two plus. So we need two electrons. And that will give us copper metal. And that will be present at the negative electrode, at the cathode. Now, what's been oxidized here? So we have to remember our oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons. So what has happened at uh, in terms of oxidation? Well, oxidation is loss. So it's the bromide ions that lost electrons. So there, they are the particle that's been oxidized. And in terms of reduction, we want to know what's uh, been reduced. In other words, we want to know what has gained electrons, and that's the copper. So copper gained two electrons. So we say the copper has been reduced. Okay, so that's our first example. If you feel confident, you might want to go have a go at the second one yourself, but if not, we can work on it together. So here we've got silver nitrate solution and the ions present are shown again. So what happens at the anode? Remember the rule is it's going to be oxygen unless there is a halide present. There is no halide present in the electrolyte or in the solution there. So we're going to have oxygen. Now how is that made? Well it comes from the hydroxide and the equation is as follows. We get hydroxide ions which will produce water molecules and oxygen and electrons. Okay so we need to have that hydroxide as a little minus. Forgot about that. Now this is not balanced so if you might you might want to have a go at balancing that for yourself but if not the correct way to balance is, is this is we need four hydroxide ions which will produce two molecules of water and that's as a result of losing four electrons. So that's what happens at the anode. In terms of the cathode, remember the rule is we're going to get hydrogen unless the metal is more reactive. Remember oxygen is given off in this case as gas bubbles. At the cathode, as we said, the rule is hydrogen is going to be given off unless the metal is more reactive. We've got silver here and we've been told that silver is less reactive than hydrogen. 
So it's the silver that's going to be produced at the cathode. And that's simply a case of Ag plus, plus an electron will give us Ag, which is the silver metal. So that's the reaction at the cathode. Now what has been oxidized? Oxidation is lost. Let's just draw the silver in there, shall we? Just to show that it's been produced at the cathode. Now what's been oxidized? Remember oxidation is loss and it's the hydroxide ions that have lost electrons. So we could just write that in there. And in terms of what's been reduced, reduction is gain and it's the silver ions that have gained electrons. So we can say silver ions have been reduced. There we go, that's our second one done. Probably worth just uh, highlighting the ions as previously, just to be consistent, there we go. Okay, so now we can move on to the third and last one. Hopefully you are feeling more confident and able to do this. So this is potassium sulfate solution. We look at the ions that are present. Positive is potassium and hydrogen, and then these are the negative ions. So at the anode, we're going to have oxygen unless a halide is present. There is no halide, so we're going to have the same reaction as we saw in the previous example. So we can just fill that in there as the same reaction as previously. So it's 4 OH- will give two molecules of water and oxygen and four electrons. Now remember, we can actually write this a second way, which might seem a bit more common sense, it certainly does to me, but we could say we've got four hydroxide ions minus four electrons, and that's then converted to our 2H2O and oxygen, like so. Okay, so we can see there again, the oxygen gas is produced and that will be given off at the electrode. What happens at the cathode? Well, again, let's get those out of the way, so we've got a bit of space, put the arrow in. What happens at the cathode? So that would be hydrogen ions, which would gain electrons. So we've got hydrogen ion gaining an electron to make hydrogen, but hydrogen is, is H2. So we need two hydrogen ions and two electrons. What's being oxidized? Oxidation is loss, remember. So the hydroxide ions are losing electrons. So it's hydro uh, hydroxide ions that are being oxidized and reduction is gain of electrons and that would be the hydrogen ion that is being reduced or the hydrogen ions that are being redu reduced. Let me just fill that in there. And there we go. So that is uh, quite a tricky video, I think. Perhaps we can just put in the products there as a little diagram. So in our first example at the positive electrode, we had a gas and we had copper metal at the negative electrode. We had silver metal for the second one at the negative electrode and the gas uh, oxygen at the positive electrode. And for the, next, um, for the last example, there were gases produced for both. So that's what you would see if you did those experiments. Okay, so as I was saying, there is uh, quite a lot of stuff here to go over. You might need to go over it one or two more times. And in fact, you might want to watch one of the previous videos to help you along. But if not, hopefully this made some sort of sense. This was half equations for the higher tier. Quite challenging, but I'm sure if you think carefully about it, you'll be fine with it. So thank you for, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.